actually taking the, the Bailey Bridge off is really the, the symbolic start of it all for us, I think. You know, to just get that monstrous lump of metal off the bridge and, and see the old thing again. So it's really, really special moment, actually. It really feels like it's started now. Absolutely amazing how they do it, down to the last inch. Yes, that was exciting. They've got to clear off all this fill in the next week and find, of course, the gas main that's hidden down there somewhere. That's a main gas main. Well, originally, when we started the uh, project, we didn't realise the gas main was there. It was placed over the, uh, the bridge. I believe it was the late 1980s. The gas company, whoever it was then, had the right to, uh, to place it over the bridge um, and did so. And it was covered with the fill, so nobody knew. Well, people knew it was there, but everybody had forgotten. And when we realised it needed diverting, then it, of course it created a massive extra cost. We looked at different ways of doing it, but the most cost effective and the easiest was to actually incorporate it in part of the new uh, internal parapets that we're going to have to fit uh, to comply with modern health and safety. So when it's actually finished the bridge, you won't see the gas pipe, it will be hidden inside the parapets that we're having to place on the bridge. Down behind me in the river here, we've got a couple of men fitting the scaffolding. They're actually up to the waist in the river. I didn't realise they'd actually have to go in the water, but they do. Um, and over the next day or two, the scaffolding will be going straight over the bridge and then there'll be an encapsulation and they'll start the work where it's generally out of sight of the public. The scaffold formed a full encapsulation around the bridge, protecting the environment and wildlife from the poisonous lead-based paint that was to be blasted from the original iron structure. Contained within the scaffold using special grit and a powerful hose, the stripping of the bridge began. As you can see, that's the old pen. It's obviously past its sell by date. And this is what the, this is the stuff we get to the second time round. You blast it off with grit. You can put the paint system on, going straight back down to the cast steel. Once the bridge had been stripped back to its original state, for the first time since 1813, it was brought into the 21st century with new safety standards and given a second lease of life. What they've done is they've, um, they've bonded these extra steel plates to the rib to thicken it up and make it stronger. And then these um, bracing beams here were originally just very thin tie rods. So they've replaced those with these uh, new, much stronger um, reinforced bars. And later there'll be actual diagonal ties between there and there, just to brace it all up and stop it flexing. Preserving the structural integrity of the bridge had always been a priority during the restoration. Because of the bridge's weakened load-bearing capacity, it would have been easy to replace the Bailey Bridge with another similar solution. Engineer Steve explains how the new structural additions ensure safety whilst allowing the original bridge to carry the weight, making it more than just an attractive facade. Well, we came up with the um, steel deck option which then rested on the existing cast iron angles but also then spanned as well. But the load goes into the original bridge. Finally, on the 22nd of June 2008, Marple's restored iron bridge was officially opened to the public. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me here today to attend the opening of this Grade 2 listed iron bridge which marks the completion of this major project which I know has been seven years in the making. The bridge has now been saved ladies and gentlemen for 200 years. When the Heritage Lottery Fund awarded the grant they told us that the thing that stood out in our application and that persuaded them to actually award the grant was the fantastic community involvement and support in this project. They said that it was outstanding and it's a sentiment that we can only mirror. Indeed, without any of you lot out there, uh, this campaign wouldn't have got off the ground. So you can all give yourselves a big pat on the back and please accept our heartfelt thanks for that. Thank you very much, you people.
<laughs> we should have a gun. <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much. As the bridge approaches its bicentenary in 2013, it continues to span the River Goit, not only as testament to Marple's historic past, but also as a symbol of its community spirit. <laughs>